I've been twirling the whole way here. <laughs> I just haven't been out, so this is like, oh my god, there's people. Who have I met for the first time tonight? I just saw Emma Raducanu and I like, I, my heart skipped a bit. I was like, freaking out. I did see Anna Wintour and went, oh my god, she's real. Idris Elba. I've been going around the whole pandemic saying, should we do an Idris Elba? When we do the whole, you can't greet people. And I thought it was going to go down like a lead balloon, but I think he likes me now. I think one of the first albums I ever owned was The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, a life-affirming, life-changing record. The only time I met her was a couple of years ago and I, and I cried on her shoulder and she was really gracious. <laughs> she was really lovely. Album. I'm a bit young for that. <laughs> Spotify Shuffle. You don't know B2K? Uh-huh. Tell me na 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 No? You know B2K, innit? Come on! Marvin Gaye, what's going on? The album is so special because it, when you put it on, it doesn't really stop. Like the, every song like um, melts into the other songs. Fever by Kylie Minogue. I keep going back to that era. I think the styling and everything is just... Definitely Spice Girls. That song Bumper to Bumper was on it. Frank Ocean's Channel Orange. I remember like walking to my exams like, I'm gonna get through this because Frank says I can. <laughs> my first ever job was uh, working in retail. I think everyone should be made work in retail for a year. I worked at Lush, so I used to do all the bath bomb stuff. And, you know, I was showing a kid how to do it and the little girl said, I really want to work here when I'm older. And the mum went, no, no, darling, you'll have a much better job than this when you're older. And I was like, you lady. <laughs> oh, I had like three simultaneously. So I was like a loan administrator. I was a nail technician and I was an ice cream scooper working in a Polish restaurant in Elephant and Castle. There were perks. The alcohol percentages in, in Polish drinks, it's like the beer did not need to be this strong. But we moved, helped me clean orange juice machines easier. I did like a test in-house thing for L'Oreal and I was like 15 and I thought I was rich. You know when you're at 15 or 16 and you get disposable income for the first time, so you're just like, oh! My first casting, I remember being with my mum and just like looking around all these girls and thinking like, why am I here? Like they have all their like designer bags. I remember I had like this Disney tote bag with Bambi, but I had these like heels from Sure Express. Do you remember Sure Express? I remember just like feeling so awkward and out of place. My mum's like, Jordan, you got this. They're not you, they're not Jordan Dunn. You work those Sure Express shoes. I saw a tweet about an open audition for a play and I went and did it and then that ended up being the play that my agent signed me for, and then I got Dairy Girls after that. So I used to work at a commercial radio station before I joined Radio 1, and I was everyone's runaround, but I loved it. <laughs> it just gives you um, an innate respect for everybody that you have to work with when you're working at TV production, a big radio production, whatever. Like, I've been the runner, I've been that person. First ever gig was at the Pickle Factory, and that was 150 people. Thought I was performing to a, a stadium. My dad has been my mentor all along. Um, he's a huge inspiration to me. He's quite tough on me and has high expectations, but I'd say if I could get anyone's approval, it would probably be his. Elton John, cash, I know, it's crazy. I remember like being in my flat and picking up the phone and it was Elton John's face. He doesn't just say, oh yeah, I support this person and then that's it, it's out on the internet. It's like, he calls me. Tyra Banks, I remember she sent a letter to my agency and I was so gassed and she left her number as well. And I was like, oh my God, what the hell do I do with this number? Like it's flipping Tara Banks. One of the things that I wish I'd done would have was to reach out, but I never did. I never really looked up to anybody else apart from the women in my life. I grew up wanting to be fiercely independent, just like my mom. My dad used to walk into my bedroom and say, F him. and that was like a really serious piece of advice from an Irish man. Just f them, you know what I mean? Fair is not an option. I loved it so much that I got it tatted on me. Sometimes I forget, I'm not gonna lie, but then I look at it and I'm like, yeah, you know what, nah. Fair is not an option. Walk with purpose. Even if you're picking up milk, there's a reason why my feet are on this ground. I make so many mistakes every day that I just don't even take them in anymore. I trip over my own feet all the time and I'm an elite runner. It's really awkward. The multiple times I lied to my mum. There was a Franz Ferdinand after party that I really want to go to. I snuck in, but then my mum found out what I was doing. She was like, 
going to all the hotels like around London and just trying to track me down. I got dragged out of that so quick. She is a badass. She used to hack into my MSN messenger and chat to my friends and find out where I was. Iconic. I remember I was in a school play. Me and Red Riding Hood had to like mess up the three bears house. But I got like very into it, like very method and picked up a chair and threw it across the stage. I panicked and just started hysterically laughing. I remember the teacher being like, come on, get it together. And I couldn't. So that was an early traumatic <laughs> experience. I forgot to press record on a really important setting of interviews once. If you f up, hold on to that feeling, remember it. And just remember that you never want to feel the way ever again. Are you guys recording? Every day. I mean, I was just winging the whole thing. The stakes are so high because the whole country's watching you like, don't drop the baton because you're representing 66 million people. I think that in the studio you're meant to feel like safe. I've had times where people have said very problematic things in the studio and because I'm so vulnerable and open and feel like I can be who I am. It's a bit like when you touch a snail and they go back into the shell. That's how I felt. When I was doing the Chosen Family video with Elton John, we had maybe three takes. I remember being like, action! And then just having to be like, I can do this, I'm lying on the piano, I know what I'm doing. But I was just, in my head, I was like, Seeing yourself on a billboard is, is, is really strange. I was doing the grocery shopping with my mum and someone just pointed right in my face and went, you're on the television. And I kind of went, I think, I think I am. After the 2019 World Championships, when I was in Qatar, so I wasn't entirely sure what was going on back home, they told me that I, my name is mentioned in Parliament and then for my race, they paused the six o'clock news. I was like, that's not. They did not need to do that. Just put it on a different channel. I went to Cuba with my ex and we were in a nightclub in Havana. And this couple came up to me and were like, excuse me, Joy Crooks. And I was like, oh, wow, I didn't think that this would happen in Havana. And we spent the whole weekend with them. All the smokes and mirrors were gone. I met Beyonce, she was fantastic. She was very nice. She told me she liked my dress, I was really happy. I was with Cara Delevingne, and like, we were coming down the stairs and then we see Beyonce in Solange and then they spotted us and then they were like waving and coming towards us. I was just like, mate, are you, what's going on with my life right now? Yeah, it was, it hit me in so many ways. I was walking down um, like the back streets of Notting Hill and Mick Jones was on the other side of the street and he's the lead guitarist from The Clash. And I literally just crumbled. I've not met Britney yet, but I'm sure that'll be insane if I ever met her. Being able to do what I love, which is compete uh, against the best players in the world, I think that's what made me realise I really could do this for a living. Particularly in sprinting, you get this like adrenaline rushy feeling. It's you know like stealth at Thought Park, and you're on the edge. If you probably could jump off the ride, you you might. But the difference with me in sprinting, it was like I've got that feeling and I'm ready to go. And that's when I knew this is exactly where I'm meant to be. This is exactly what I'm meant to do. Last year, the Tories had that campaign, and they were like, you know. You could be a ballerina or you can get into finance. That made me realise I wanted to be a musician. And that was probably a forever moment for me. <laughs> Amazing, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> See, mistakes, clumsy every day. Yeah, true stories. It's probably the most like deep conversation I have. Tonight.